Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Hands up who used to play the fighting fantasy game books by Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston. I sure as heck did. From an early age I loved fantasy, loved games, and I really loved reading. And as I often found it difficult to find people to play board games with, fighting fantasy was an ideal solution. Look, I've got a box of fighting fantasy books right here. These are my daughter's, although she hasn't read any of them yet. I actually had a go at Warlock of Fartop Mountain recently, and if I'm honest, it didn't have the same appeal as when I was a child. Some parts didn't seem particularly exciting, and I wasn't a fan of so many choices that could potentially penalise you, but which didn't provide enough clues for you to make informed decisions. Oh, there's a door. Do you want to open it? Yes, you fall down a pit. Obviously, Warlock is the first title. They did get more sophisticated over time. But nevertheless, I suspect this isn't a part of my childhood I will be revisiting. Or is it? Because the reason I'm talking about fighting fantasy books is because, in case you haven't heard, Martin Wallace, yes, he of Brass Birmingham and a few acres of snow fame, has translated the gamebook format into a solo and cooperative board game coming to GameFound in August 2023. Now, this isn't the first time someone has had a crack at a fighting fantasy tabletop game. Steve Jackson himself designed The Warlock of Fartop Mountain, which was published by Games Workshop back in 1986. But this is the first time in which a designer has attempted to faithfully adapt some of the fighting fantasy stories using mechanisms akin to those that you would use when playing through the books. The game is for 1-4 to four players and incorporates 5 adventures derived from popular books in the series. The Warlock of Fartop Mountain, naturally, Island of the Lizard King, Death Trap Dungeon and the Forest of Doom which has been split into two adventures. There is also a bonus adventure that isn't based on a book and was used originally for promotional purposes to showcase the system. Each adventure is supposed to take from 1-3 to three hours to complete, and while you can replay adventures making different choices, the adventures aren't randomised, so there will be points where you know how to handle a situation based on your prior experience, exactly the same as if you were playing through one of the books. And indeed, this seems to be about as faithful an adaptation from page to table as you can get. The core concept, from what I can gather from articles and videos, is that for each adventure there is a deck of location cards, with each card depicting an environment with available exits. When you enter a location, you place that location card on the table and then find a corresponding encounter card to read. Between the encounter card and additional clues on the location card, you should have an idea of what you are supposed to do. Each exit on a location card has a number on it. If you go through an exit, you search the location deck to find a location card matching that exit's number and place it on the table with the entrance lining up with your previous location's exit. You then find the encounter card key to that new location and read it. Sometimes the encounter card will give you a choice, and depending on your actions you may have to flip the card to read the reverse and discover what happens next. This may in turn direct you to find another encounter card that will help to progress the story. As a simple example, there may be a chest in a room. If you try to open the chest, you flip the encounter card. The reverse of the card will tell you what you need to do to succeed in opening the chest. If you are successful, the card will then direct you to another encounter card in the deck which will tell you what you have found. Finally, you flip over the location card containing the chest, which will show a picture of an open chest on the reverse. If you have to fight a monster, you roll dice and add your skill value. The monster does the same. The difference between scores is how many wounds the loser takes. You know, it's fighting fantasy. There are a few little twists in the rules, such as luck tokens you can spend to force rerolls, and there are additional rules for playing with multiple heroes. For example, there is a strategy board that lets you determine the order in which the heroes will enter a room, and which also allows you to arrange heroes for additional bonuses in combat. Each hero has unique skills, which can be used once per adventure, and of course your heroes will find special items which do carry over between adventures, so it's a bit of a campaign experience. And as far as I am aware, you always use all four heroes when you play. You never get to tackle these dungeons alone. But for the most part, it looks like a very streamlined, simplistic experience. You move into a room, read the encounter card, react to what you have found, choose which direction to leave by, find the next location card and encounter card, and repeat. Gradually you will build up the dungeon, or forest, or whatever, learning the lay of the land so that if you do fail this time, you will have an easier time of it on your replay. And that sort of appears to be it. I am sure there will be more to it than that, but I think that's going to be the core experience. And I'm really not sure about this one. Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston do appear to have been involved in the creation of the game in some capacity, which is good to know, but I can't help feeling this one might be erring on the side of being a little plain, not to mention a little fiddly. 
With each new room you enter, you have to sift through the location deck to find the right location card. Then you need to sift the encounter deck to find the right encounter card. On your first play, that might not be too bad. The cards will most likely be in numerical order in the decks and relatively easy to find. But if you are replaying a quest for any reason, you are first going to need to reorder the cards or else have a frustrating time sifting through multiple decks each time you play. Furthermore, every time you enter a new location, you have to determine the party's marching order, which involves constantly switching tokens around on the strategic sideboard. My concern is that there won't be enough game to justify all the card flipping and deck surfing. So yeah, not sure about this one. And I guess I might not be alone in my concerns, as the forthcoming GameFound campaign is not Wallace Design's first attempt to get the game funded. Originally, the game was on Kickstarter but it was cancelled after funding stagnated at around half of the 100,000 Australian dollars required and just over 1,000 backers. On GameFound, the campaign has been completely restructured and the price point has been significantly reduced. So hopefully for everyone involved, lessons have been learned and they will have greater success this time. Regardless, I just wanted to do a quick video on the game. One, because I used to love fighting fantasy books and it is interesting to see someone developing a new system for the tabletop derived from those stories. And two, I thought there would be a lot of people out there who might want to look into this one a bit more and I wanted to draw it to their attention. To that end, you will find a link in the video description below to the Game Found page, which is currently just a preview page because as I'm making this video, the campaign is not yet live. There are videos on there you can watch and more in-depth information from Martin Wallace himself. I am including the link for information purposes only, I am not in any way affiliated with the campaign and I am not being sponsored for this content. But this is a game I will be keeping half an eye on. If nothing else, it appears to be reasonably priced, with the core box, around 11 to 18 hours of gameplay, priced at $35 US including applicable stretch goals. The original Kickstarter price was $60 Australian. However, as of right now, I haven't seen anything that has got me really excited. Although all this talk of fighting fantasy has reminded me I have this sweet copy of Legend of Zagor on my shelf. I think it's about time I gave this a whirl on the channel. Watch this space. And that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.